Okay, so let me tell you what led me to this years ago is that Robert and I have participated in primitive skills gatherings for 25 years or so and almost 30 years. Well, it has been 30 years. Next year. So we've always known that there were edible plants because we know people who actually live out away from towns. They live off grid. They live in the forest. Some of them are like trekkers and they eat what they get when they're going. So um, we've always known about it. And I've picked a few weeds here and there, but you know, when you got a family who's not used to weeds, they look at you and go, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's one of them. So, you know, since I love Robert, I try not to feed him weeds unless he actually okays it first. Um, but the last two or three years, as we've been watching the weather change, we've also been trying to learn how to garden. And instead of getting better at gardening each year, the weather has thwarted everything. And we had, this year was the extreme year. Last year I started, it was almost as bad, but this year was the extreme year that we literally planted hundreds of regular vegetable seeds in six different time periods. And I got one carrot plant, I got two beets, I got two turnips. No, they weren't turnips. They were uh, rutabagas. And I think I got one kale plant that died right after it came up. And so I had nothing to harvest except for the corn that got wiped out by the storms recently. As you can see, it's pretty sad. Um, we did get some potatoes. Yay, we got potatoes. <laughs> No fruit except a handful of apples that are full of moths because it was raining when I should have sprayed. <laughs> so, zero pretty much except for the potatoes. And I was just kneeling in the yard after that third crop did not come up. And I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, I got to have some food. This is the year I'm supposed to harvest. And this little voice pops into my head and said, well, eat what I gave you. So I decided to actually use my knowledge and figure out which ones were nutritious and what the nutrition was and which weeds I wanted because some are bitter and some are not bitter. And some of them are bitter on part of the plant, but they're not bitter on other parts of the plant. And Robert doesn't like bitter. <laughs> so I didn't put any bitter stuff in my, in my green stuff that I did. So basically what I did is Robert helped me because I begged and pleaded and he was nice enough to say yes. We picked all kinds of weeds that just taste green, except for I threw in a few onions and I tried not to make it too many. <laughs> and we dried them and powdered them and made them into a green drink. And I got out of my yard this year, after we threw away just as many weeds as we've harvested, I have eight gallons of green powder. Wow. So, <laughs> I know, we have a lot of weeds. <laughs> but if I were going to do it just for me and not consider the taste, there's many more weeds I could have used. There's flowers I could have used, and I didn't. My friend that lives down in Winchester has done kind of the same thing in her yard after I, she saw what I was doing, only she also has been helping me keep my berries picked. I do have berries, gallons and gallons of berries. And so she would come and pick some and she would take them home and dry them and powder them and stick them in her green drink. So she has a berry green drink. Um, so there's a lot of things you can get that literally just come up in my yard all the time. If you don't have enough weeds, come pick mine. <laughs> so we're going to do just a little bit of a walk. The first thing you need to do, of course, is learn how to identify which weeds you want to have in your powder, if you're going to do that. The guy who actually wrote one of the books that has the nutritional values in it, he has a green drink business up in the northwest somewhere. So he makes these sm green smoothies out of like a taco truck and sells them out of weeds in his yard. 
So, um, but he's very knowledgeable. And he has a lot of the same weeds we have. So I've got a bunch of books to show you. I've got pictures to show you. And we'll talk about, he's actually very good at describing how to learn what plant is which one. And he's got YouTube videos, so I'll give you all that info later. So let's go for a walk. So the first really identifiable plants that are super easy, and please be careful on the mud, because it hurts today. These are mallows. They get little flower buds on them that we always ate called cheesy weeds. I'm pretty sure almost everyone in the U.S. has seen these before. They're related to hollyhocks, and they are um, related to the desert mallow which those two are also edible and have the same medicinal properties, but one of them is more bitter and the other one is more fuzzy. So these are actually the easiest to deal with. Uh, if you're eating them, you can just pick them and eat them. You can throw them in a salad. All of the plants that I used literally can be just used in a salad or steamed or any of that if you just want to eat them fresh or if you just want to eat them like this instead of drying them. Um, this one is a lamb's quarters, and I've got some bigger ones so you can see the leaves better over that way. Uh, this one is my one and only actual purslane plant that is still here and alive and looks good, but it got, it got um, wiped out by the mud, <laughs> so it's kind of wimpy. It was darker green before it got mudded. Yeah, yours is prettier. You can pass it. What did you say that one is? Purslane. Purslane. You can tell it's purslane because purslane is a succulent and it tastes kind of lemony. But there's like five different plants called pigweed. So I try really hard not to call something a pigweed because one of them is actually toxic and it's in my yard. When we come across it, I'll show you the toxic one. Don't eat it. <laughs> Fridge it right there and you wade it through there anyway. Which one? That one right there. Just pull the whole thing up. I just dug up my potatoes. Oh, did you? So if you're going to use this, I would use it when it's smaller. This is one of the wild lettuces. We've got some different kind of black We actually have several wild lettuces Obviously. in our... So this one is a wild lettuce. Diamond Valley actually has several varieties of wild lettuces. They're useful. They're better when you get them when they're tiny. So once you identify them when they're small, they will be less bitter and they'll be less stickery and weird. But they're, they're also a medicine, so I, didn't, I, wa I wanted them to grow so you could see what they look like. They have yellow flowers on them. Right now I've got some, I think, down that way that might have flowers on them. So and when, you them. when you say when they're, you pick them when they're smaller, smaller than that? Oh yeah, okay. small. If you, there's a lot of desert plants and, and these kind of weeds that as they get bigger, they get more bitter or their flavor gets so strong you can't stand to eat it. But if you eat them in the spring, it helps your digestion get going and it helps give you those vitamins first thing in the spring and they're, and they're not bitter in the springtime. And the ones that are really bitter are just a little bit bitter. You said it has medicinal. What's the medicinal? Well, you didn't ask me that for the class, so you don't get to have it today. <laughs> <laughs> you can look it up in my book in the house. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because I've got another plant. I've got another place I'm doing an edible plant class um, in about three or four weeks. And so. You're my preliminary class here, and I didn't get everything put together yet. So. Okay, so we were just talking about this lamb's quarter. Yeah. Oh, let, me, let me get a good example here. So this is lamb's quarter. Um, it just, it's like spinach, only the leaves are small. You literally can just pick it and eat it all year round until it dies off in the winter. But um, if you want to let them get bigger and go to seed, the seeds are also edible. In some countries they're actually used for grain. 
Um, but lamb's quarter. So can they be made into bread or no? Is yeah, it... you have to have a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but yes, they're totally mm -hmm. edible grain, uh, and the birds love them. So I, that's why I started letting them grow in the first place. And Robert was like, oh, he was not happy about me letting these grow. <laughs> but this is the typical leaf pattern on a lamb's quarter, and. Even when they're small, they have this shape of a leaf to them. If it's roundish at all, it still has that little edge, uh, what do they call, toothed edges on it, like this. So, this one's a very useful plant. I have friends whose kids actually like lamb's quarters better than spinach, so she just keeps them in her yard and she just keeps picking either leaves off or a limb off and then letting the rest of the plant grow. So you can do that. You can let some of them keep growing. And if you want them to grow but you don't want seed pods on them, you can just pick off the seed pods and leave these on for a minute. But um, I have so many of them, I literally just, I do this and I just strip the, I just strip all the green leaves off. So you pass that around if you want to see. So the other plant right here, this one is actually, I've grown it for a medicinal plant, but it's got a, a good sizable amount of nutrition in it. So I also put it in my green drink. And you probably get it in your grass and you hate it because it's a weed. I planted this on purpose. <laughs> this is plantain. It's also very good medicine. And we wanted it to be in the yard for medicine, but I've been adding it to my greens. Um, Teresa, well, this guy? This one's plantain. Plantain. Chew it up, yeah. put it on a bug bite, it pulls the poison out. So, hang on, she wanted to see plantain the other day. So there's the plantain. So the, the plant here that I did not put in my green drink is um, I was going to pick some marigold greens, but they're pretty spicy. So I didn't want to ruin the taste of my green drink with the spiciness. And if you didn't know, not the part that's inside here, but just, just the orange actually tastes pretty good. And What's so the rest it, of it taste like? And the leaves, the, the white part is bitter. Okay. But if you want to go ahead and pick some and taste it, I don't care. I got a lot of it. Sure. But um, I have a friend Thank who you. does a lot of edible flowers. And marigolds is one of the things she sprinkles on her salads and all that. And marigold leaves. Like it's a strong flavor, so you don't need a ton of it on each thing. But she does use it all the time. So the whole plant marigold is edible for that? The whole plant stuff? Yeah, but you don't want to eat this white stuff. In there because these are better. Bottom so part you're of the doing, so you're just eating petals, petals and leaves, and leaves and put all the orange there. Yeah, the inside of this. Okay, the, 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 the other thing that I read up on this year that I had in my yard and I dug them up because it's too late for you to see them are my sweet potato leaves. Sweet potato leaves, they're not a potato. They're actually related to like the morning glory family. And so you can eat the leaves off of sweet potatoes. Um, yeah, you can or steam them or whatever. So, and some greens, as you read about them, there are some greens that your body um, digests better if you steam them. So if you have digestive issues, you might want to look that up on each plant. Um, let me see. I was trying to see if there was a... Is this the same thing as one you've already showed us? Yeah, these are the amaranth. This, this whole section of... I mean, we literally have gone through several kinds. And this is the amaranth. Amaranth. We've literally gone through like the typewriter and gone down the row, and down the row, this is down the row. <laughs> so when we walk on your feet, that's bad. Oh, I'm done for the season. I think okay. that one is enough. That one's strong. Well, if you want it to be 
if you want it to be the most lovely in flavor, they're better to pick when they're just little. Like, these are bigger plants. Um, that one's littler because it didn't get as much water. But if you get the plants that are smaller before they get this sprawly, and, and I dry them this way, but if I were just going to eat them, I would get them when they're... I'm just going to pretend that this is not a sprawly one, like this big or a little bigger, and just pick the leaves off. And usually there's a bunch of them because these all come out of a main root. So you could pick off, you know, some on one day and throw them in your salad and some the next day and throw them in your salad or whatever, but these grow like weeds. <laughs> so you're going to have a ton of them if you have them in your yard. Almost everybody who has them has a lot of them. Right. If you don't have enough, you can come pick mine. So, and they're not hard to pull, but I literally, when I'm just drying them, and even if I were going to just put them on a salad, you, could, you, just, you just pull these leaves off. Just, no more weeding. No. <laughs> Time to sell Loma's our weed face. rocker. Look at Loma's face. <laughs> no. She's my neighbor. The goat okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are goat heads good in? Smoothies? Can we have a goat head smoothie? I have never tried goat heads. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I, I hate the good seeds, anything. and so I, yeah, I'm very good. unwilling to let them grow. Well. Very unwilling to let them grow. Yeah. 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 Oh, what, the sunflowers? Yeah. Um, well, sunflowers are medicinal, and I like to watch the birds in them. So Robert is irritated every time I let one grow. But <laughs> if you have stomach problems or anything else, you make tea out of the leaves and it'll be gone it, almost immediately. It like takes away diarrhea. Just a wheat sunflower. tea of the of Which the one? Sunflower. Yes. Sunflower, the sunflower, the wild sunflower. The flower itself. The leaf. The leaf. Just, just, take a, just take a couple <laughs> little leaves and make a tea. <laughs> Stops uh, diarrhea. Um, They're all leaves. Um, this is my poster for my other one that has to have a poster board on a table and a presentation. And I couldn't even think of a name for it, so it's not done yet. <laughs> but I wanted you to see these are the plants that I used in my green drink. So my presentation is on the green drinks that I made and how I did them. The only let me see, I think there's one plant on here. <coughs> there's one plant on here that is down and dead, but it grew in my yard and you can't see it. Well, alfalfa actually is one of them down there. And this plant called salsify. Salsify is actually related to dandelions. And I didn't know until they were big enough that they were starting to get woody that if you pick them when they're small, you can eat the whole plant, like you can eat the stems like little asparagus and stuff like that. Mm. So mine all got dried and put in my green drink because they were woody by the time I got them. By the time I realized I should be eating them. So uh, the salsify and the and only other plants... just come up randomly in your yard, like you didn't plant them? Yeah, they just came up in my yard. And the alfalfa just came up in my yard. So I pulled it out and put it in my green drink. Um, I put these plants in here because my garden was so bad that um, I had celery plants, but they weren't doing well, so I cut them off and stuck them in my green drink. I had parsley plants, and, so, and I had a bunch of them, and so I cut those off and put them in my drink. I put some onion greens in my drink, and these are... Um, cauliflower, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. And I did actually get a few heads of cauliflower, but I got more outer leaves and these little tiny heads. And the outer so leaves are, the leaves the yeah, all of the outer leaves are edible. So anything that wasn't down in the dirt and yucky and wasn't in the head, all got dried and put in my green drinks. So, um, so how did you dry it? Just in a food dryer. Yeah. Well, some of the stuff, if I had too much stuff in one day, um, we have screens that literally we only use for drying food out in the shed. And so Robert would make a stack out in the shed and I would make a stack in the food dryer. And so for some days when we had a lot of stuff, 
ready to go, then we used both of those. But um, I mostly just dried them in the food dryer. And you would think that cabbage and broccoli wouldn't dry very fast, but they actually dried faster than some of the weeds I dried. They were pretty, they were pretty easy to do. So, um, this has the, all these little, all these little thingies here, because I have to leave this on a table all day, has the vitamins that are in them and what their actual medicinal or their uh, botanical name is. Um, I put this picture on here because I have the narrow leaf plantain, but there is a wide leaf plantain. But the desert plantain doesn't ever get enough water to get very big. It's literally a plant like this big. And it's kind of a sagey color, fuzzy leaves. It doesn't look like these. But I never even look for it because it's so small. <laughs> so that's where we're at. Um, I wanted to show you, these are some of my favorite books over here. And we can put this where people can see it later. See there. So this, the salsify look just like dandelion? No. Okay. It's no, a the flower. Okay. The flowers are yeah sometimes this big around if you're going from point to point on the okay. flower. Okay. And the stems are um gosh they're almost like they're a thick grass or grain on the stem, mm -hmm. and they have leaves that come up and then fall down. I mean, they almost look more grassy than they look like a dandelion. Okay. And then they have those cute flowers on them. Okay. And, and they, they, and they taste okay. I ate them. But. And the plantain's just wild, too. It's not... Oh, no, I planted every planted. bit of that because it's a good medicinal plant yeah. that we use all the time. Right, okay. I didn't know if you planted <laughs> that one or not. Okay. Yeah, no, I planted that one. So, I picked this one today in the yard. This one is also edible, but you need to get it when it's little. This is like the very last day or two for this. It doesn't have stickers on it yet. It's just starting to get little prickles. But if you get it before it's prickly, tumbleweeds are perfectly edible, and you can eat them. I actually tasted this one today. It was okay. <laughs> so, so let me tell you about some of my favorite plants. This one is... This one literally is a weed book. It's put out by uh, Utah State University, I believe, or the state of Utah. It's called Weeds of the West. The reason I like it is because it has great pictures and descriptions. And it also tells you, you know, if you, most of the things in here you're gonna find easily because they're irritating to farmers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this one I also bought years ago when we were looking for medicinal plants. This one I like because, see the color codes on here, color pages? Mm -hmm. It goes by elevation. So if you're looking at a plant and you're not really sure, what, if, because there are similar plants to each other in the desert, but if you're looking in a certain elevation, you know what elevation you're at, you can look and go, Okay, it meets this criteria, it has this kind of a flower on it, it has whatever, and it makes it a little more easy to identify some of your wild plants if they're in a certain, you know, like you said, some of the, some of the plants only grow in Dameron Valley, they don't grow here. So slightly different elevation. So this has been helpful in, ele in finding elevations of plants. Um, this one is just about Sagebrush country, hello lady. How you doing? This one also has really good color photos. And everything in this plant grows in, this, in a sagebrush area. So all through Utah and up into southern Idaho and probably western Colorado a bit. And maybe, maybe the very top of Arizona. And so I've got some for the Rocky Mountains, which the Rocky Mountains plants, also a lot of them will be on Cedar Mountain, on the top of Pine Valley, places that are up above um, five or 6,000 feet. Um, so I've got two or three that are specifically for the Rocky Mountain area because it, they have the mountain plants on them. 
these two plants, I like these people, I like the way they write, I like the way they do stuff, but they don't live in the desert. They live where it's green. <laughs> so their plant books are useful in some ways and in other ways it's like, oh, you don't live in the desert, you don't know. <laughs> it does not just grow. <laughs> and it doesn't get, in fact, some of the pictures, when I see pictures of some of the plants that we have here, and it says they grow all over the United States, somewhere else where they actually have water, it'll be this tall, and where we are, it's going to be this tall, just because of the amount of water. So that's the other thing you have to take into consideration when you're watching a YouTube video is does this person live in Oregon or Northern Idaho or in Pennsylvania? <laughs> and if they're not from the Southwest, their plants, even if it's the same plant, are going to look a little different. They're going to be a little greener. They're going to be taller. Maybe the leaves will be a bigger size. So this guy is in the Northwest area. This is the one I said has a taco truck, taco truck with green smoothies. But you can look him up on YouTube and he talks you through how to sit down and talk about the plant to yourself. This is what kind of look it has. So you can get it in your mind because you're looking at it, you're speaking it out loud, you're touching it, you're moving it, and looking at the actual layout of the um, colors and the layout of the leaves and how they grow. It helps keep it in your memory if you're trying to identify a plant. So um, he's got good stuff, and what I really liked about his book and the reason I bought it is he actually has nutritional values for the plants in his book. And then he has recipes in the back. <laughs> I don't care about the recipes, but I was excited about nutritional values. <laughs> so that's one of the things that helps because looking up nutritional values for some of those wild plants is kind of hard to find information on stuff. Um, it's been a little easier this year than last time I tried it. So some people are paying attention and putting some actual analysis into things that are out there to eat. So I did find more information than I thought I would online for some of the plants that are hard to find. So um, I put my bottle down. So this is basically the bottle I've been eating out of for, uh, I don't know, last couple of months, three months or so. And I literally dry my plants, I put them through my blender, and I take about that much in water every day. Some people like to put them in smoothies, some people like to, I know there's several women online that take a tablespoon or two and throw them into <coughs> spaghetti sauce, and into lasagna, and into soup, and into whatever they're making to make sure that their kids are getting enough green stuff. <laughs> so that's also a way to use it is just to start sneaking it into your food. So but so you just take that, put it in a cup of water and drink it. Yeah, and I'm not a sipper. I literally just guzzle it and then it, it just tastes green. Everything in here has just got a green flavor. I didn't use anything that was bitter or tart or stickery. So the last part of my the last part of my project, since I had so much of it and I knew I wasn't going to use it quickly, um, I used a vacuum sealer. But you have to make sure the powder doesn't go in your vacuum sealer. So I put fabric in between the green powder and the top and used a vacuum sealer. So I vacuum sealed probably. I don't know five or six gallons worth of green drink, and hopefully I will be able to use it fast enough that it won't go completely dead. <laughs> anyway, so that's just, I mean, literally, that's what I've been doing to use up what I had, because that's what I had this year. So, does anybody have, have questions? Have difference in how you feel? I do feel better. I've been taking green drinks for years. And when I get in a slump and, and I'm too lazy, <laughs> then I can tell. I do feel better if I take greens every day. Temperature dehydrating in your dehydrator. Is yours got a temperature controller? It does have a temperature control and I do it down on very low. 
100. It's like around 100. 100 degrees. Because it would be the same as drying it outside. Okay. Yeah. I try not to dry any of my stuff over what it would be outside. I mean, I grew up in St. George. We've always been allowed to just dry stuff outside, right? <laughs> Out on the back porch. My mom dried everything on the back porch. <clears throat> she didn't have a food dryer, so. Anyway, I figured if it got 100 degrees, which it was normally in St. George summers, that should do it. So does anybody else have any questions? How does it affect the flavor when you put the onion in? Does it Well, onion? I didn't put very much in, and I had literally a nine-quart canner full of powder that day that I was stirring all these different plants together. So I'm pretty sure you will never taste the onion in it. <laughs> Because there wasn't very much onion. Almost zero information in the world that I could find without going to a, a college that did research like University, Utah State University. <laughs> so I've literally just been very cautious about it until the last few years. And now there's information everywhere on the internet about edible leaves. You can find so much on it right now. By the way, goat heads are edible. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Well, there's a thing that you can do for. There's a lot of pros for the guys on the goat heads. Testosterone increasement, libido increasement. It's a anti-aging. Anti enhancer. Those goat heads, they are going to get the best of us anymore. <laughs> 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 it's actually edible or not.